Hey, what's up guys? It's Brian here, Brian's Law Maintenance. All right, we're gonna be talking about X's and O's, some numbers to help your business grow going into 2019. In fact, this whole video was inspired by one of you guys. You had left a comment on a recent video. It was actually Thomas G. And he said, lawn maintenance alone is not the only thing that you can do with your business. And it's not the only reason to pick up a new lawn customer or customer in general. Uh, he said that lawn maintenance alone, a lot of overhead to it, and it can eat your business alive. And don't neglect the other profitable services and parts of the business. I thought it was a fantastic uh, comment and something that I have been learning myself over the last two years. And I really wanted to just kind of share some numbers and perspective about what he's talking about and even how it works and pertains to my business. So we're going to talk about that right now. If you guys are new here, my channel is all about helping you guys grow a more successful lawn care landscaping business so you can go out there and crush it. Today, I want to show you guys exactly what that means and what it looks like. So a lot of you guys know that over the last decade or so that I've had my business, I've done a lot more with lawn maintenance than probably any other service or product that we've marketed through our landscaping business. I wanted to talk to you guys uh, about how we've made money just lawn maintenance and then also let you guys know the profitability uh, that's available to you for the rest of the business with the services like cleanups and pruning, uh, sprinklers, fertilizer, etc., etc. So this whole like kind of conversation is is learning for me as well because I never started my business with the intention of ever doing anything more than lawn maintenance. And I've talked about this on a previous video before, I've probably left hundreds of thousands of dollars on the table. But the other side of this coin is I see a lot of the conversation lately with people have goals for 2019 and they wanna make more money and they always start with something like, I need 50 new lawn customers or I need 50 new clients or I can't wait to get 30 new clients. A lot of times statements like that are just kind of shooting it from the hip and there's not a lot of uh, focused thought or even backtracking and uh, working backwards on those numbers of what that actually means. It sounds good in theory, it sounds really ambitious and I'm all about that, but I like putting pen to paper and as you guys can see, this is a a whiteboard that's literally attached to our living room wall. Uh, this is something that we use every day on multiple businesses and we talk all the time and we share stuff between my wife and I about business and marketing and life and sales and this is, I'm a visual guy so maybe this will help you guys out as well. So let's get into the meat. Here's what I want to show you guys. Let's talk about revenue for just a lawn maintenance business. Now let me throw a number up on the board. Let's say you have 25 regular cuts in a regular season. I know it's higher uh, for some of you guys, less maybe cuts for some of you uh, as well. But let's just talk generic numbers, 25 cuts, and let's say you have a lawn maintenance client at $30 a cut, right? Let's do times 30, 750 bucks, right? That's not too bad. You're getting $750 off a lawn maintenance client for the season, some good revenue. Nothing wrong with that. Let's times it by, let's say you have 100 clients. That is 75K in gross revenue. Now, I'm not gonna get into all the nitty gritty about profit and uh, you know profit margins and all that other mess. Uh, maybe another video for another time if you wanna see how we kind of run some of our numbers and how we set budgets. Always another video topic, I guess. Um, but there's nothing wrong with this. This is a stout little business. This is something that I've done for a long time. We've always had a good maintenance business. I always say we do 100 plus lawns. It has ballooned way more than that. I don't put everything on YouTube for a reason, especially the last two, three years as things have gotten a lot bigger. So when people think that we're an actor, that's fun, that's fine, it's okay. Uh, but let's just take this example. This is a good business model. But to go back to what Thomas G said, almost the reason you get a customer sometimes is to sell and provide every everything else. I want to go into another example and let me show you the amount of money you might be leaving off the table, not by having to beat the pavement and go get new customers, but by just by cross-selling, by adding services, taking some energy, some thought, and training yourself and learning different skills uh, in the business. So let's go through the rest of the revenue that's available on a given season, right? We understand there's $750 in maintenance work, right? $750 a year in maintenance work. But let's go through the regular season, the rest of the season, right? In the beginning, let's say this is a 4,000 square foot uh, subdivision lawn, okay? Subdivisions, you guys know what I'm talking about. Gosh, I can't spell. That's why I don't write, right? All right, so 750 bucks 
in a regular 4,000 square foot subdivision lawn. That's pretty uh, popular and typical from where I live. And I know different parts of the country, it's different. So let's talk about the rest of the services for the season. Typically speaking, we're gonna do a leaf cleanup, a spring cleanup, right? And that can go anywhere from $125 if it's just kind of vacuuming up the lawn and it's really easy to maybe 275 bucks, three and a quarter, depending on how much we're pruning. Let's just say a base cleanup is 250 bucks. All right, so we have 250 extra dollars on the table, like Thomas G said. Don't leave the cleanups on the table. When I got started in business, all I wanted was the lawn maintenance. I had never provided leaf cleanup. All right, let's go through the rest of the season as we go into spring. We did all of our cleanups in March or April, and now we're going to go and do, let's just say a spring aeration. Let's say a spring aeration is another 100 bucks. Plus or minus, it could be 50, it could be 60. Let's just roll through this so it doesn't take all day. Another 250 bucks for a clean, uh, cleanup, $100 for the spring aeration. After that, let's say that we have, uh, we're have we planting some flowers or something like that. Um, I don't do a lot with flowers, but I just wanna use this as an example because a lot of you guys do. Let's say you're planting uh, 10 flats and it's 300 bucks, I don't know. Could be high, could be low. Let's not get lost in the numbers, guys. I just wanna show you some examples here. Let's say you have a mid-season pruning. Uh, you might have boxwoods or this or that or spirea or whatever, you know. This is where I'm still getting educated about when to prune and what time of the season. Again, it takes time. It's a little bit different than just kind of mindless mowing, if you will. But let's say you have a mid-season prune for uh, 250 bucks. Pruning, something like that, right? All right, let's say somewhere in between here, um, we got to do all the mulch, right? So let's say we have uh, this kind of property is 10 yards worth of mulch at $87.50 a yard installed. Could be higher, could be lower. Let's not get lost in it. Mulch install, right? Because almost all of our customers want mulch installed. That's fine. 875 uh, more dollars in revenue. Let's say we're just fast forwarding, we're going through fall, we're still mowing every week. So we're going through here and we come up to a fall aeration, let's say another hundred bucks fall aeration and let's say while we're there we upsell them on an overseed so we can do a fall aeration and overseed now granted this would probably be fifty dollars for a, a fall aeration and hundred twenty five dollars overseed so if this is a hundred this might be like 250 bucks a little bit bigger property in this example I do a lot of my aerations for 50 bucks uh, but you guys get the point so we have fall aeration overseed and then we have to do a fall cleanup property this size Let's just say it's another 250 bucks. Could be higher, could be lower. These are regular subdivision lawns, right? Fall cleanup. All right, now this is really fascinating to me and it is kind of a basic topic, something that I had my head in the sand for a long time because I never provided more than lawn maintenance. And we've had a good maintenance business. In the last two years, this is all the stuff we started getting into. So let's add this all up. What are we looking at with revenue outside of lawn maintenance that we've been leaving on the table? Well, I got my phone with me, 250 bucks for the cleanup, 100 for the spring aeration, 300 for the flowers, 250 more for pruning, 875 more for the mulch, 100 more for a fall aeration, 125 for a overseed, $250 for the fall cleanup. That's 2250. That's 2250 in extra credit work outside of your lawn maintenance work that you're already doing, which is crazy. Now, that's $2,250 in new work that you didn't have to go and acquire new customers for, provided you were never doing any of this service again. Well, let's times it by 100, right? We have 100 customers. So let's do this. Let's add two more zeros. Let's put our little uh, comma in there. And it's $225,000 plus your original $75,000 in maintenance work. And now you are running a 300K gross business with literally no new customers. Now, again, this is an example. I know some of you guys are already saying, yeah, but not everybody's gonna get all this. Totally understand. Yeah, well, not everybody's going, well, not everybody has 100 customers. Some people have 50, some people have 400. No problem. But let's just say we take this number and we even just cut it in half, right? Because honestly, this is kind of what we did last year. It was really no big deal because we started adding uh, cleanups the last two years. Uh, we've always added spring and fall aeration, so that's always been getting the revenue. A big thing for me last year was mulch. We moved a couple hundred yards of mulch in the spring with a couple extra guys. 
uh, which was huge for us. Thanks to uh, Brandon and Mike, I learned how to do overseeding, a lot of you guys, and so we provided a lot of overseeding service as well to our customers. A lot of great extra rev uh, revenue in the fall. Now, one other thing I wanted to tell you guys is that this also doesn't include snow removal. Now, again, one of the reasons I sold a route that I had over on about 25 minutes away, a different side of town, that I did not provide snow removal for, was we had 20 customers over there. 20 customers at, let's say, $350 a season, what is that, $7,000 in snow removal, I had to leave on the table because my route was just partitioned. It was on a different side of town. I couldn't do snow removal over there. So I wanted to cancel that side of town and that route, yes, to you know increase all of this, but the reality is that now we have other options where we can add, let's do this, we can add snow. 325 or $350 a customer. Some of you guys offer salting, right? And that could be whatever. Times that by 100 customers in our same example, 100 times 325 for the season or $400 for a contract for the season, what is that, another $40,000? Now you got this number up to 340, 350 if you add salt. Residential or commercial. If it's commercial, you're doing 10% of what I'm talking about here in terms of numbers and clients because there's only so much you can do as a solo owner operator. But the reality is that now you just added a $350,000 year business. It's not that complicated to me. Hopefully this video is coming off with the fact that don't just keep your head in the sand to get maintenance work alone. I did that for a long time. And when I said on a previous video, I was at my supplier, uh, Site One, that I was uh, kind of frustrated that I only left uh, maybe a quarter million dollars on the year, uh, on the table over the last 10 years. The reality is that, okay, hindsight's always 20-20, so we can't really play this game, just like when we all wanted to invest in you know Amazon when it was $10 a stock. But the reality is that the, the younger you are and the sooner you get started with the rest of these other services, which we didn't talk about fertilizing in here, we didn't talk about brick paper patios, we didn't talk about uh, you know, digging pools out and all this other mess, whatever else. There's so many other services you can get involved with, uh, you know, that is part of your skill set or something you want to expand with. But to me personally, this is awesome. Now, again, I understand there's profit uh, and overhead with maintenance and it's more predictable. Not all the profit margins are the same here, so there's things you have to learn. I understand that you're gonna need an extra guy or two part-time to tackle all this extra work, right? So that's where you see a lot of guys with a maintenance uh, mowing team, and then you also see a secondary rig or crew that is landscaping. So most guys that are solo owner operators will have a two to four man company, nothing uh, crazy. They'll have a maintenance side of the business that pays the bill money, pays the salaries for the guys to do the rest of this work. And this is very profitable work if you know what you're doing and uh, if you want to uh, put some thought into this side of the business. So all things being said, this is really, really good stuff. Again, we've always had a good maintenance business, but now I'm excited about offering I wouldn't even call them hardscaping or you know heavy duty landscaping solutions. For residential customers laying 10 yards of mulch, putting some flowers in, offering some aerations, and then definitely providing snow removal service, that's what I intend to do going into 2019, 2020 to double that revenue goal and start hitting that two to 250 range. Uh, for me personally, I think 200 is really no big deal for a solo owner operator kind of business and an extra guy or two. Uh, after that, your time is kind of capped, so you can start pruning the customers that are the weak sauce in this whole uh, example that maybe only get one or two services per year. Then you can fill them in with customers that are a lot uh, more robust and get all of your services. Read that book, The Pumpkin Plan. It's a really good book. I always leave the uh, Amazon link uh, in the description down below for that book. It's a really good one. So hopefully this helps you guys out. I know it did for me, but Thomas G, great comment, great suggestion. Lawn maintenance alone uh, is okay. Don't neglect this side of the business. This can be two to three times the revenue that you can bring in outside of your regular maintenance business. So you might not need 50 new clients. You might not need 20 new clients. Maybe all you have to do is cross sell, upsell, uh, some other products and solutions. So that's it guys. If you enjoyed this one, shoot a big thumbs up. A little bit different type of video. Being as transparent as I can with you. Hopefully this helps you guys out. This is what I'm doing. Maybe it'll help you guys out as well. We'll see you guys on the next video.